Hey, it's Rashila Lin once again and welcome to another minimalism video. Today I decided to create a video about the difficulties I encountered when I was still starting my minimalism journey and how I was able to resolve these problems. I hope this can help you but honestly, <laughs> this video is also for myself so that one day in case I return to my old non-minimalism habits, I will be able to remind myself how I can let go of my excessive stuff easily. I am very sure I will need to rewatch this video someday, so feature me if you're watching. Hello, let's get started. <laughs> this is a common problem when decluttering the original costs of the items. You find something, especially things that you barely use that you also don't want to use anymore, but you remember how much you bought it for, like how much money you spent on it. That is valid. I know. I get it. I really do because I am not wealthy. So for years and years, I held on to things that were expensive, but I honestly wasn't using anymore. But because I was so determined to become a minimalist, this is what I told myself. First, I had the option to resell it. I'm sure there are things we can find in a very good condition and some people will buy it from you for half of its original cost or even lesser. So you will not be able to get your money back. But compared to keeping that thing sitting in your closet, not being used with no purpose, just collecting dust, I personally would take the money. Next is, we can forget about the cost and think of how it can be better used by others. And I'm talking about donating it, giving it to someone. A good example is this pair of expensive shoes that I used to wear when I was still working uh, in the corporate world. I needed to be in heels, so these shoes had four inches of heels. I used it for a couple of months, but after that, I never went back to to working in the corporate world anymore. Uh, nor did I find myself needing to wear those kinds of shoes for any occasion, especially when I became a mom. But I kept those shoes for years and years because of how expensive they were and sentimental value, I guess. And then when I was decluttering, I found those shoes, the leather already chipped off, the heels broken, it was unrecognizable, it was very sad looking and that's when I realized how it could have been put to better use by someone who needed it way before it got worn out. So I guess we should really be more mindful about the things we're deciding to hide at the back of our closets if we are really keeping it for a good purpose or if it's better to just have someone else use it. Besides, money cannot replace the mental clarity you get from being a minimalist. In my previous video, I talked about my understanding of the saying, less is more, and it also applies to this problem. You would think you're giving yourself more peace of mind when you decide to keep these expensive things instead of sell them or give them away. Uh, but if you think about it more, once you get rid of it today, you don't need to worry about its maintenance, about the closet space it needs, about needing to clean it from time to time, making sure it's not rotting or being eaten by house insects or what. In other words, if you have less, you have more energy for other matters, more space in your home, more free time to rest. So try to let these things go. Again, money cannot replace the mental clarity you get from being a minimalist. Second problem I encountered was the just-in-case mentality. I found so many things that I haven't used in so long, but I was like, mm, what if I'm gonna need it someday? This is hard to find. I love to have this around when someone looks for it. I might find myself buying this exact thing one day, so I should keep this just in case that day comes. Personally, <laughs> what I did was this, and this is also my advice for you guys. I thought of how long I never looked for that object or how long ago was the last time I needed to use that thing. If I used it very recently, then it's not a just-in-case item. It's something that's probably useful. 
There are lots and lots of examples for this, but on top of my head right now will have to be the clothes that used to fit me when I was way more petite. I kept them even though I never have worn them anymore in three or four years, just in case I will lose enough weight. And what if I will be looking for tiny swimsuits and skinny jeans, but it's been four years, I never lost weight. And these clothes are getting old. Some elastics were snapping off. You know when clothes get too old and unused in our closets, they kind of uh, expire as well. So I gave them away. And I said, I'll just buy a new one when I need one. So far, I haven't shopped for skinny jeans yet. I probably will not anytime soon. So I'm glad I gave those old ones away. They were consuming too much space in my closet and also the new owners seem happy. I've seen them use my old stuff. Number three and the last thing that was making decluttering quite difficult for me was the sentimental value of my things. A lot of these were things that were given to me by family and dear friends and whether or not I liked these items, <laughs> I kept them because they were gifts and once upon a time, they meant something. Things like bath and body works gift sets. The thing is, I don't usually change my bath products because my skin reacts to it sometimes. And some of these sets have bath salts and heavily scented non-moisturizing lotions, which I don't use. Some come in baskets that seem to be not reusable, but I found myself keeping these gifts because they were probably thoughtfully given. Others are, again, pieces of clothing like org shirts from college that I probably overused already, but I kind of loved having a piece of college in my closet. I also found a ton of letters, notes, greeting cards, and they were taking up so much space. Some of these things are more sentimental than others, so I guess the first step that I did to deal with this problem was um, to sort all of them according to importance. And then, and this was what really helped me, I took photos and videos of these things. Actually, like I said, I took videos of myself while decluttering. I documented my whole minimalism journey, and in those videos, I talked about the things I found um, that meant something to me and then I said goodbye to these things so for example I found this shirt that my husband got for me like six years ago they were on a vacation and I wasn't able to come with them so he got me a shirt from that island and I never wore it but I just kept it I found it while decluttering and I was like Oh, this is super important to me. I love this shirt, but I am not using it or I could, but I'm choosing not to and someone else can definitely use this. So in the video of me decluttering, I talked about the shirt a bit. I took a photo of me wearing it and then I gave it away. I did this for, for almost all of my things, I guess, except for some letters I found in like super important journals. For these journals, I'm thinking of scanning them uh, one of these days so that I can keep a digital file and throw the actual papers because they're starting to fade and disintegrate. But I think I would like to reread these journals when I'm older so at least when they're digitally filed, I could store them in the cloud or in one hard drive which could be less time consuming to go through and most definitely less space consuming in our home. Again, this was the biggest help in my minimalism journey, deciding to take videos of my decluttering process and take um, photos of the items I found that were too sentimental. I know it means that I am still kind of keeping them digitally, and that means I am not yet a digital minimalist, but like I always say, minimalism is a journey and this is the phase I am currently in. I am also more comfortable this way and I am already quite happy with the space I was able to free up in our home.